Hello everyone and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. Today is February the 2nd, 2022. Groundhog Day. Did you see the groundhog where you are? Um, I don't think anybody saw anything today where I am because they are um, threatening big snowstorms and blizzards blowing through the area was supposed to happen last night. I thought I'd be snowed in today, but it was really quite mild and raining this morning, but the snow is coming down pretty fierce right now. So wherever you are, I hope you're home safe, snuggled in with a ball of yarn and a hook. <laughs> and we'll be fine for however long we are kept at home as long as we have our yarn a pattern and a hook to keep us busy. The benefits of crocheting or knitting for those of you that knit. <clears throat> um, a few things I wanna take care of before we get started. Um, first of all, please, I really appreciate if you would subscribe, comment, like, give me a thumbs up, and even share this video with others. Everything you do helps, and watching right to the end of the video also is a big help. The other thing I want to take care of is um, the winner of the uh, book a couple weeks ago, Carol, and I'm going to put her name across the screen here. I haven't heard from you yet, Carol, so um, could you please get in touch with me? I need your mailing address. So if you could do that by Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's the time zone I'm in. If I don't hear from you by that time, I will go back to the random comment picker and I will pick another winner, which I will announce next week. If I don't hear from you, Carol, by this Sunday. <clears throat> And that would be February the 6th, I believe, Sunday, February 6th, before 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I really want to send this um, project book out to somebody so they can benefit from having it and make use of it. So you'll notice by um, the title on the video that today we're going to talk, I don't know how to say the plural, so... My question was, what is a Mobius? Is it Mobius's? Is it Mobii? <laughs> I don't know. So we'll just stick with singular Mobius. I don't know if all of my followers know what a Mobius is. So I have several examples um, of a Mobius to look at today. And I will try to explain how it is made. So I am wearing a Mobius. I'll take it off so you can see it. This one was made thin and long and it has, as you can see, it has a twist, a twist in it. Okay, there's a twist in it. Um, some people would say, oh, that just looks like the infinity scarf. I make a long scarf and I fold it and I attach it. It looks the same, but it is not. And I will explain in a minute how it is different. This is twisted when you are making the first part and then you stitch around it. And I'll explain that in a minute too as you go. So I left mine as a long infinity scarf that, that folds down low. It is long enough that I could uh, take it and wrap it around my neck, but it's a little bit um, tighter than I want right now. Um, and this particular Mobius, um, I don't think it was any special pattern because it's mostly just double crochets and every so often I do the lace, which is, you know, chain one, jump, skip a stitch. So I have um, it solid and then I have some skipping and it keeps going. Now, before I show you another one, I want to explain how a Mobius is made. 
it's made by making a long chain and some of your cowls and some of your long um, <clears throat> infinity scarves, you know, you take the chain and you join it like you would a poncho. You join the chain <clears throat> into a complete circle. <clears throat> and you want to be very careful. You do not twist the chain and you join it. <clears throat> now, to create a Mobius, you would then single or double crochet all the way around and then in a poncho or a normal cowl or infinity scarf, you would slip stitch after you've gone around once, you'd slip stitch to join and keep going. But you don't do that in a Mobius. Instead, you take the two, let's say they're this wide and you've single crocheted all the way around and you flip the one you're working on down like this. And you keep on going on the bottom side, like this is the chain, this is the single crochet. You keep going on the bottom side. Now I'm going to insert a picture right here that shows this clearly. So when you flip it down and you continue to stitch along the bottom side and go all the way around again, until you meet up, then you slip stitch. So you now have basically two rows of single crochet, but it has been flipped when you join it. And every time after this that you go around, you'll be going around on the top side. And when you come back around, you'll be going around on the bottom side. So you'll be stitching it like a figure eight. And this is what makes a Mobius. And you say, well, what on earth is the reason for that? What's the point? Why don't I just do two and flip it and turn it? Well, the reason for that is that when you have, say, a gradient cake, and I'm gonna show you the yarn this was made from in a minute. When you have a gradient cake, you are working, there's the center of my Mobius and I worked, because I was doing an eight on over and under, I was working out from the center. So see how the gradient works in both directions. Also the pattern, in other words, if I decided after the first row to do the lace row, I would go all the way around twice really in a figure eight and make lace on both sides. So I decided to do three rows of lace and it ended up being on both sides. Then I went back to solid and I think eventually, yes, I did some lace again farther out. So whatever pattern you're doing, if you're doing fans or you're doing V-stitch or whatever, whatever you do on this side, you are replicating on this side because you're going all the way around on one side and coming back on the other side before you join. You're virtually going around whatever the length is twice before your first stitch and your last stitch meet up and you slip stitch it together. And there is, um, there is a lady who um, does a lot of these. Um, I wanted to show you a picture of her work. Um, just give me a second here. Um, I'll show you the yarn. I used this yarn only in pink, of course. I used the whole yarn and this yarn is actually like a lot of merino cakes that you buy are look bigger than this and uh, oh, not merino i'm sorry wrong word a lot of gradient cakes that you buy are fairly large and they are cotton or cotton acrylic this happens to be 100 percent merino extra fine merino the cake has 400 meters in it, or 436 yards. It's 100 grams. And by starting at this color in the middle, I can make the gradient work out. Rather than have it go from pink to gray, I have 
it working pink out to gray. And the same with this, the teal, if I did um, a Mobius, would work out to gray. And I could do whatever pattern I wished, and I would have the same pattern on both sides. So um, I want to show you, uh, just give me a second here. I lost it. There is a lady, she has a Facebook page, and I will definitely link her below, that does um, a lot of Mobius in fancy patterns. And, and she's called, her, her company, her website is Silver Rose Studio. And she does a lot of fairly intricate ones. Here is one of hers, Silver Rose Studio. Um, she, you can see that's quite large. The one I'm going to show you in a minute is, is large as well. There are others. Nastasia, for example, has a Mobius and hers is online. Um, she does a tutorial. Here's another Silver Rose, and you can see she's put some lace work in it. But the lace work is on both sides of the middle. So it works out from the middle, the same on both sides to grow. Now I'm wearing this as a scarf and I could wind it and make a small cowl out of it. But let me show you what Hope is wearing. She's wearing a bigger Mobius which twists down here. Now, if this were a real person and she had wider shoulders like a real person, this would be wider and would twist up. In fact, some of them wear them out like this on their shoulders. Oh, I can't grab a hold of it. On their shoulders and have it twist in front of their chest. Um, I can't do that with Hope. She's a little too small. Um, but you can see this is just a plain, um, plain pattern, all double crochets. But the color started here in the middle and worked out on both sides. Now, this yarn is from Hobie. And I think the pattern was a Hobie pattern as well. Um, I have a couple of other colors in this same yarn. Here it is. And I think it's called Dolce Cashmere. Dolce Cashmere from Hobie. And here's the color of it. And let me tell you about it. It, um, it is 65% superwash virgin wool. 25% polyamide and 10% cashmere. These are not cheap on Hobie's site. I did not buy them at full price. I waited until they were on a substantial discount, like about 50% before I bought it. And I also have this one in this color. You know me in my blues. Now there are 200 grams in these balls, which is 770 meters or 842 yards. They suggest a three and a half to four millimeter hook. Very, very soft, very comfortable um, to wear. So that is another Mobius and is quite large and would be quite warm and would fit a person better than it fits, fits Hope. And they had, when I first bought these, they didn't have a lot of choices of color, but I noticed when I went in there last week, they've expanded the line and they do have more colors. They have one that's been their number one seller for a long time that looks like a rainbow. And my purple sweater, my purple sparkly sweater was made with that um, rainbow yarn, I believe. They do a sweater, uh, uh, 
that goes in that um, rainbow color. So that's this Mobius. Now I'm going to take that off of her and I'm going to show you a smaller one. What happened was I had a cake of yarn. I don't even know what yarn it was now. And um, I split it into two. And I made two Mobiuses, two Mobiuses to Mobii out of this cake that was sparkly. And um, I sold the one. It had the pink into black. This part was pink into sort of brown. And again, it is, the person that bought it is going to wear it over her shoulders, crisscrossing here in her chest, in front of her chest. So it would be like me putting this, let me try it with mine, me putting this down here. And crossing here. See, that's how they would wear them. Especially the wide ones, because then they would they would come farther down your arms like this. Well, that's how the big one is worn, um, is one of the ways it's worn. And now I have this one. And you know what? Maybe if I go way down her back, we'll get the effect. Oh, it doesn't want to stay. But that's how... If you had a full-size person, that's sort of how a Mobius might be worn, especially a wider one. Um, but the nice thing is, if you have a gradient, you don't have, to me, a scarf that starts pink and goes to brown wouldn't look as nice. The fact that it starts one color and works out the same on both is really nice, I think. <laughs> and you don't have to wear it this way. You can wear it the way I was wearing, like a long scarf. And if you make it long enough, it does go. Mine's a wee bit tight to put over my head. But, I mean, being wool, it stretches. Okay, now I have one more that I pulled out of the stash pile, I guess. One day we're going to have a discussion about whips and what I call UFOs. And this was one of my UFOs. <laughs> and here it is. This one is going to be a cowl. And there is the crisscrossing in the front. See the crisscross? So it's just going to be small. You can make a Mobius any size you want, any width you want. And any, and any kind of pattern you want. So this one has, I'll take the back there, a little bit of lacy in it. And it started here in the center with the solid and then too lacy, too lacy. And um, continuing on. And I think I'm just doing what I feel like as I go. And the yarn I'm using in this one See the Mobius here. The yarn I'm using in this one is um, Lion Brand Ombre. Now I've got it kind of folded because I had to take some yarn and wrap it around it. But there it is, Ombre Life. I don't know if you've seen these cakes See, I've used part of it. It's going to get darker, and it's going to be fairly wide when I am done. A fairly wide cowl. So it'll be nice and warm around my neck. So I've told myself real soon I need to take this out of UFO and put it back into, take it out of timeout, you might call it, and put it back into use and get working with it. So to tell you about this yarn, it is 50% acrylic and 50% cotton, you can see the usual four strands, and you can see it starting to change from the very, very light mauve to the darker mauve, 
and eventually it'll be quite dark. So we'll talk about this one day along with all my other um, timeouts. <laughs> oh, I forgot to um, finish about this. This is upside down. This is from Wool Elf, and I got this on Etsy. So I will definitely link this in the description box. I will link this from Hobie in the description box. I don't know what this one is. Um, I don't know, sparkles, you think I could remember it. But I will link these two, and I will link the ombre in the description box. Okay, we need to be moving on. To cover what I didn't cover last week. Let me just take a drink first. Last week, I started to talk about hand-dyed yarns from Martin's Lab. And then I ended up cutting it off on you. And I apologize for that. But uh, to start with, um, the video did something funny. Oh, there it is. The video did something funny at the end, and I made a mistake, and it was a mess, and I was going to have to fix it. And while um, I was puttering around trying to decide what I was going to do with the video, I received my mail, and I got the hooks that I showed you last week. I really was looking forward to those hooks for a long time, so I thought I would show them to you last week. So now I'm going to backtrack. And once again, I'm going to tell you that we're going to see hand-dyed yarn from Martin's Lab. And I mentioned the name last week, and then the thing got cut. And so here we are looking at Martin's Lab again. Now, I see that there have been other people that have um, shown their yarn on YouTube before. I'm not the first one to show it. And I want to make a point. Um, I watched uh, um, I watched Yarniversity with Reggie on Sunday, and she talked about people that review yarn. And I want to make a point of saying, I have never in any of these weeks tried to review the yarn. One day, I think I will do some reviews, but right now, all I'm doing is showing you different yarn companies, particularly trying to show you Canadians, since I am Canadian, and letting you know and see what kind of yarn some of these companies have, where they are, and just tell you how it feels to me. Later, I will pick some and maybe do some reviews. So Martin's Lab. First of all, here is their logo. And you can see their website. And I don't remember what I did last week, I, d I don't think I did anything more than mention the name. They are, <clears throat> I thought they were a U.S. company, but they are located in Poland. So for those over in Europe, the shipping would be quite reasonable for you. Now, all of these are classified either as comfy merino or merino singles, except for one. And honestly, I cannot tell you the difference because the comfy merino says it's a hundred percent superwash merino and the merino singles says it's a hundred percent oh i see what the difference is um this is what's called one ply and this is a twisted ah okay i need to take my glasses off to see that so this is a one-ply, so it might be a little bit roving, whereas this one is a twisted. So let me show you the colors I got. This is Merino Singles, Merino Singles, Merino Singles, and that's comfy, and that's comfy. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Merino Singles. This is a 100%, and it has 400 yards 366 meters and this one is called winter hair now 
in the picture, it looks creamy, almost white. But when I'm here looking at it, it's got a kind of a beige look to it with the sprinkles of color. But definitely a neutral. This is called Winter Hair. And now I know the difference, and it does feel a little different than the other one. Okay, so Winter Hair, Merino Single. Now, these next two are probably my favorite in color. You can understand why this one is. And this one is called Tenerife. Tenerife. There's the word. So all the specks are the same, just that the color's different. That got gorgeous coloring in it. And finally, I think maybe of all of them, this is my favorite. And this one's called Aquila. And I just love the colors. Now, on the screen, it looks more bluish. To me here, it looks more green. But look at all the pretty colors going through it. I could probably put these two together. Very pretty, although I likely won't. Lots of, uh, see the greens going in through there. Okay, this I think is a popular color there. I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, next we have what's called Comfy Merino. And this Merino, and I don't know if I hold it up close, if you can see the difference. This is one ply. And this is twisted. It actually looks just a slight bit thicker. So this color is called indigo. This is indigo and blues and reds. And again, it looks darker here. The red's almost maroon in one place. There's almost maroon. It's a deep blue, which goes to some purpley color. Um, I have to say that I think the singles feels a little bit softer than the twisted one. And the other um, merino twist is this one, and it is called Candy Sparrow. And apparently this is their most popular color on the site. And I got two of these. I'll show you the other one in a minute. These are both the um, twisted. Okay. This size has more in it. This one had 366, I think. 366 meters. This has 400 meters. So 437 yards. Okay. Now... This color, I really, really liked it when I saw it online, and I was able to order it in what they call Cashmerino. Same color, Cashmerino. This has 400 meters, but it has 80% Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Nylon. So, obviously... You can see a little difference there. This has more halo, a little plumper, and definitely softer. Uh, I ordered this a while back, but I do recall that I tried to get cashmere in more colors. I particularly wanted cashmere in this, and I think I tried to get cashmere in the, these two. And they were out of it. Now, I might be able to go back and see it now. But I really wanted the colors. And now I know I love, especially love this Aquila. I will get more. Um, and I think I would try to get it in cashmere. So there we have it. Feels nicer. Has a wee bit of a halo, I guess, because of the cashmere. So that'll be very, very comfy to uh, work it up. So that's, that's Martin's lab in Poland. And, of course, I have to show you a Canadian company. 
And the Canadian company I'm showing this week is called Okanagan Dye Works. Now, I had a couple of skeins of yarn, and I wanted to get a little bit more to show you um, Okanagan Dye Works in Canada, obviously, in the Okanagan Valley. And for those that know the area, they are located in Vernon, B.C. Now, I got these two, and I'll show you them in a minute, a while back. But I went to make another order, and I see now that they are shrink-wrapping it in plastic to save money on shipping. And so I also have this hank. So I'm going to show you this one first. See the beautiful purples, pinks grays and this is a very very pale uh creamy pink looks creamy there but there's definitely pink in it here now i'm not good at twisting them and doing this thing so i'll do that later and put it away in my storage cabinet but that is the one i just got today in fact perfect timing so let me tell you a little bit about it. This one is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon, and it's three-ply. There are 225 yards in it, which means there's just a little less than 400 meters in it. And it feels, feels quite nice, like most standard merino and nylon blends. Some feel nicer than others. This is more average. Um, and the color, I don't know where they get this color. It's called Garlic Scape. You see that? Garlic Scape. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but that's the one I got today. And I do love the color of that. Then the other two I ordered. Um, there, by the way, if I didn't show it earlier, is their um, website. Website. Okanagan, uh, it's glaring. Okanagan.dyeworks.com. And you can see all their social media. And here is the color. And uh, this one is the same as the other one. Merino nylon blend. Three ply. And this one's called... Izzy on the eyes. <laughs> Izzy on the eyes. So do you see the pinks and burgundies working into the teals? Uh, a lot of speckling going on there. So this end, there's even some green in it with the teal or aqua, whatever you want to call it. Busy, a bit busy. We'll see what that does. So that's is he on the eyes? And then the last one I have here is called Bark at the Moon. And it's the nice, beautiful purples and pinks I like. It actually gets into black here. Looks black here, but on the screen it looks like navy maybe. Lots of purples, pinks, different shades of purple. You know, I like this. Even fuchsia pink and then a nice softer, paler pink. Really, really pretty colors. So those are the ones I got from Okanagan Dye Works in the Okanagan Valley in Canada. And like I said, Canada in the U.S. at least, she is shrink, shrinking it, vacuum packing it to, to make it cheaper to ship um, overseas. You'll just have to check with her. I, I really wouldn't know. These are all fingering weight, by the way. I didn't mention that. So that's the yarn I have to show you this week. And, of course, the finished objects. Next week, um, next week I'm going to have yarn from three different companies that carry plant-based or vegan yarns. Some people um, 
would much prefer, especially if they have allergies to wool, would much prefer to work with what is called vegan yarns. So I happen to have yarn from three different companies that's totally plant-based. One is Canadian, one is from the U.S., and one is from the U.K. And we will look at the three, and we'll look at the various combinations of things like um, cotton, bamboo, silk. I don't know what's in all of them, but we will definitely look at the different combinations and talk about them a little bit. So that's what's planned for next week, as well as some finished objects, of course. We wouldn't have an episode without some finished objects. So if you are interested in plant-based or vegan yarns, I hope you will join us next week. Until then, happy hooking, everyone.